Listen to part of a lecture in an environmental science class. Today, we're going to begin discussing ecosystems. One important point I want to emphasize from the reading is that there are many interactions that take place within an ecosystem. Interactions between animals, interactions between living and non-living things, and so on. Now, these interactions can be fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, there are certain species of ants and rodents sharing a desert ecosystem in Arizona, and they compete for the same plant seeds. And the competition influences not only the size of the ant and rodent populations, but also the number of eventual plants. Now, this interaction is easy to see, right? However, there are many other interactions within ecosystems that are not so apparent and require closer examination. And the example from your reading was the forest ecosystem along the Pacific coast of North America, um, specifically the role of salmon. Okay, as you probably know, salmon are born in freshwater streams. They migrate to oceans where they spend most of their lives, and then they return to the same streams where they were born to reproduce or spawn. In order to spawn, Salmon need cold, clear streams to ensure the survival of their eggs. And trees in the surrounding forest play an important role here. Their leaves provide shade from the sun. When logging removes the trees, the streams are open to the sun and the water becomes warmer. When the water warms up, the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the water decreases. And this reduces the chance that the salmon eggs will survive. And the trees also help keep the soil on the banks of the stream in place. Salmon cannot spawn in stream beds clogged with sediment, dirt, from the surrounding area. They need a clean gravel stream bed. Brad? I've read that salmon also help keep streams healthy. Right. Salmon contribute important nutrients like carbon and phosphorus, and these nutrients promote diversity in the stream environment. Okay, um, so salmon need trees to successfully reproduce. But surprisingly, trees also need salmon, and bears play an important intermediary role. So in the autumn, bears are busy putting on extra weight as they prepare to hibernate. Each bear catches an estimated 700 fish during the 45 days that the salmon are spawning. The bears catch the salmon in the streams, and then they carry them back into the forest to eat, sometimes as much as 800 meters from the streams. And since the bears only eat about half of each fish they catch, other animals like eagles, crows, and insects feed on the leftovers. Maria? Why do the bears bring the salmon so far into the forest? Why not just eat the fish near the streams? Well... Imagine several hungry bears looking for salmon. When one bear catches a fish, it's not uncommon for another bear to try stealing it. These confrontations can be pretty intense, so it's safer to bring it back into the forest, to a place where the bear can eat undisturbed. Um, you said that the bears only eat half of each fish they catch? I mean, if I were a bear preparing to hibernate, I'd probably eat everything I could catch. Well... Certain parts of salmon are more nourishing, fattier than others. It's actually more efficient for a bear to only eat some parts of the fish and then try catching another one instead of eating the whole fish. Okay, so after the scavengers have eaten the leftovers, only the fish's skeleton remains. Now, salmon contain nitrogen, so their decomposing bodies and skeletons provide a lot of nitrogen to the surrounding forest. Plants absorb this nitrogen, which they need to grow, so the transfer of this nitrogen to the forest is important. Forests near streams with salmon actually reach maturity faster than other forests. Okay, so why is all this important? Well, salmon are in trouble. Some of their populations have gone extinct, and most of the remaining populations have been significantly reduced by overfishing and environmental challenges. Now, conservationists can try to prevent overfishing, but, well, I mean, you can see the interconnections within this ecosystem. 
We already talked about the importance of trees to salmon and the negative effect that something like logging can have. So you can see that protecting this ecosystem is going to take a broad effort. Well, I actually saw a Netflix video about all of that that she was just saying. Okay, that was easy to understand, right? Yeah, better. Okay, that was a lot better. So there are going to be things that you're very good at, different, particular genres that you are better in in comparison with others, okay? So I want you to always remember that. So if we actually <laughs> look at this, okay? It says many interactions with the ecosystem. Basically, now there was the ants and the rodents, but this was primarily about salmon and how they contribute not only to the river, the forest, but also bear populations, how it's very contributory, how a specific fish is very good and how a forest and everything works in, you know, like a, a full circle to help one another, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. Let's break this down. Now it says here, what is the lecture mainly about? And it says a new approach to inch. Oh, there's no new approach, is there, Joanna? Mm, I don't think so. Nope, I did not write down an approach. How about similarities? Desert? I don't remember anything about the desert. No. Ants, rodents, that's too small. No, thank you. Interactions that take place within a North American forest ecosystem. No. Oh, but it's not too bad. But, but, let's look at D. Factors that have contributed to the preservation of salmon population in forest ecosystems. Mm -hmm. I will go with that. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. See, I knew it. I knew it. You know why? Because if we look at D, factors that have contributed. What factors have contributed to salmon being preserved mm -hmm. in forest ecosystems? It doesn't make much sense, does it? But I don't know. The thing is not make sense for me. The thing is, yeah, but again, if you look at C, it was all about the interactions. Now, yes, I totally understand. Salmon, and then she went all the way down and talked about salmon, 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 everything salmon, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just about salmon. It was about how the entire ecosystem interacted. Remember the river, how the river plays a role, how logging and how destroying a forest is going to make the, you know, the rivers warmer, the salmon are going to die from lack of oxygen. Okay, how the bears catch 700 fish and then they take it into the forest and then the dissolved skeleton goes into the soil and tree forest populations are more, but they're, they're I guess, yeah, I don't know, a little bit higher or something like that. So we're looking at the interactions between all of these different things. It's not just about the salmon populations. That's a little specific, Joanna. Mm -hmm. Not very specific. I'm talking about it's like this much, but C is this much. C is about 100% this. So C I have is a this. Yeah, I have a question. Where specific you think we can find this question in the listening part? What, where can we find it? Yeah, it's, it's um, you think it's like the reading, for example, that always uh, follow a chronologic order? There's no place that you can actually fi follow this. It's about how you summarize it. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. You got to summarize it. That's why if I looked at A, I don't remember writing down any kind of approach. And B desert was barely even mentioned so then it came down to c and d and i'm looking at which one makes up more now i told you that c we're talking about a number of different interactions because remember over here it wasn't about just the salmon it was about the bears playing a role okay i got salmon here i got the bears okay the the the, the student also said that uh salmon keeps the streams healthy Okay, so the water plays a role, the interaction plays a role in that, okay? The fish skeleton plays a role in giving nitrogen to trees. See, this is why I chose interactions, because it makes up the majority of my notes. Mm -hmm. D, it's specifically about salmon populations and the preservation. How and where did you write down the notes in terms of 
Oh, here we go. This is how salmon are preserved in forest communities. I didn't write down anything in terms of preservation, nor do I remember that. Does that make it a little bit of sense, Joanna? Yeah, I made more sense now. Okay. Now let's see. Now remember, I'm making, we got to go 100% in that first question. Mm -hmm. D is probably 50 to 60. That's why for I'm like, some people, For some people, this question is easy. Uh, but for me, it's always difficult because it's, it's a lot of information. Yep. And sometimes they state the purpose in one line, and then I miss this line. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. They state the purpose in one line, and you miss that particular line, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. okay. Whew. All right, well, it's all about development. Let's see. It's all, oh, it's okay. Now, that's what we're going to be doing. That's why we have 14 hours. You know, this is why we got that big package, because a lot of this is what we're going to be executing on, right? Okay. Here we go. Oh, ants were mentioned all the way at the top. Mm -hmm. Why does the professor mention ants and rodents competing for food? Well, it says something about the inner, I wrote before that interactions, ecosystem, animals, non-living, blah, 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 something simple, are ants and rodents competing for food? After that, I wrote down, it influences the population and plants. That's all I wrote down. So what, mm -hmm. but with what I have written down, I got to try to figure it out. A, to make sure that the students understand different components of an ecosystem. B, to point out the limited resources available to organisms in the desert. Well, what resources? I didn't write down resources. I didn't write down any types of resources. So let's keep it going. C, to illustrate how different species adapt to extreme temperatures, I absolutely did not write down temperatures. So that is immediately eliminated. You see how I do that? Yeah. Good. So based on your notes, you eliminate too, right? Did you not write down anything with that? But no, no, I didn't write, write down temperature. Something. It had nothing to do with that. It has more to do with the influence population and something about an ecosystem. So A is actually not that bad. However, D is fantastic to provide an example of an easily understood interaction within an ecosystem. You wanna know why it's easily understood? Well, I only wrote three lines and then that was it. And guess what? <laughs> she said simple. Why did I write down the word simple? Easily understood, simple. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so what I did here, if you look at this, this is a rhetorical purpose. Mm -hmm. Why does the professor mention ants and rodents competing for food? Okay, so I'm actually looking at this, many actions within an ecosystem, simple is all I wrote down. And then I just wrote down ants and rodents in Arizona. They compete, and then it says something about influencing the population and plants. A is said to make sure the students understand the different components. I'm like, okay, what components? Population and plants? I don't know about that. B, it said limited resources, but I didn't write down any resource. Mm -hmm. C, it said extreme temperatures. I said, I did not write down any temperature. D, it said easily understood a simple interaction within an ecosystem. Ants and rodents competing. The key point is that it influences the population of them and plants. That's the interaction. Mm -hmm. It's all about perspective. This is exactly what this coaching and, you know, me typing up the notes and all of this, it's all about perspective and saying, oh, okay. All right. So I see how you had those little notes right there. And based on what you did, you went through A, B, C, D, and you figured out which was the closest one to understanding exactly what that was about. Why does the professor mention that? Well, mm -hmm. I wrote down simple. The biggest keyword in the world was simple. But then again, some of the bad keywords, different components. Like, what is that? Limited resources. What is that? Extreme temperatures. What the fuck? 
Yeah, this is no, absolutely. Okay. All right, let's keep it going. So here we go. According to the professor, how do trees contribute to the successful spawning of the salmon? Now, this is what you have to do. Look at your notes, Joanna. The first mention of salmon is what you have to find. And we know that they migrate to these oceans and they return to the same streams to mate, spawn, blah, blah, blah. However, they need cold and clear streams. Hey, hey, there it is right there. It says trees play a role. How do trees contribute to the success? Why? Because the leaves give it shade from the sun. Mm -hmm. Boom. So, B. Answer. B. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good job. Oh, see, okay, okay. Now let me hurry Who? up. And explain. Yes, it is true. But stupid ass China, they didn't tell us that we needed to choose two. Don't worry on your test. There, it's always going to say one or two. It's just this website is really fucking dumb. Okay, that's all uh, there is to it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all good. Uh, they what that, what yeah. that means the D. What was that? What that means? They reduce the amount of sediment. Well, the <laughs> thing is, it says they keep. It keeps soil on streams. Oh, okay. Cannot spawn in dirt. So it stops mm -hmm. the sediment, the soil from entering stream beds. So that does make sense. I did write it down here. That is correct. It's just China doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Remember, I said that five million times. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Horrible. <laughs> it when, is when you, when you, when you find better page, Arsenio. Yeah, yeah, but this is the best website now. So, like I said, it's all about you developing those techniques, the outline and method. Mm -hmm. There are going to be times where you're like, man, what the fuck is it? It's all just perspective. That's what we're trying to gain, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. What point does the professor make about bears carrying salmon away from streams? So we're going to go to the first mention of streams. Now, remember... The student said, why does the bear bring it so far? Mm -hmm. It's because they do not want to fight. <laughs> they do <laughs> not want to fight with other bears. That's what we're looking for. So what would your answer be? What's the closest thing? A, it says it results in bears eating fewer fish. It's kind of weird. B, it reduces the amount of food available to scavengers. C, it improves the health of the surrounding trees. D, it improves the water quality of the streams. Mm. I think um, I will go with, um, with the C. Excellent. Good job. That's the answer. Good stuff, Adam. Woman, why'd you go with C? Because he, 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 he the professor mentioned something about the nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yep. Nitrogen. Right. Good. Good. The, I understand good, but he say I don't know, fresh. I don't know. I don't know. But it, it's, it's somehow it's held to the environment about nit nitrogen uh, um, right right and it's playing me better helps. because it's so hard for me to understand when, in the listening part sometimes there are going to be some big words and you're going to not understand so much but you're going to have to learn how to connect some of those dots you will uh -huh. it's all about perspective i'm telling you seeing it from a different vantage point that's the only way no but 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 can you explain me please what how he connects this idea with the nitrogen is the salmon well, remember, it's it's the fish skeletons that give nitrogen to the trees, the soil of the trees, and this is how it benefits. However, okay. this is more about the bears carrying salmon away from trees, so it's really weird how see No, because they're eating. They're eating. Exactly. So it's more about them eating it in a safe place rather than it improving the health. The bears aren't carrying the salmon back because it's like, I must improve the health of the trees. No, no. So this no. is a weird answer. Nonetheless, welcome to the ETS. All right. But it's going to be all right when you take the test. You ain't going to have bullshit like this. Okay. Okay. I hope. <laughs> Wish me luck. Wish me luck, Arsenio. 
<laughs> Perspective. That's all we do. It. That's what we're doing. You're gonna, you're gonna get a lot better at this. I love okay. when you say like I will get better answer in that. In that. So for maybe maybe feel hope. Uh, right. Oh yeah, of course. Especially in that writing. That writing. We're gonna have a party. Okay. okay so. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about these last two. What does the professor imply about overfishing? Ooh. Now, I don't remember writing this down, but it was something in regards to conservationists trying to protect it and why. Oh, now overfishing is bad. So we're going to look for something negative, right? Mm -hmm. So if we look at this, it is one of several reasons that the bear population has declined. I did not write down anything in terms of bear populations declining. So no. B, it is difficult to prevent in both oceans. I don't remember writing down oceans. I do not like B. You see what some of the keywords I hurry up to say, oh, fuck this and fuck that and fuck this. Pretty fast, huh? <laughs> C, it cannot be a sole focus for those working to prevent salmon depletion. You're probably like, what does that even mean? Well, again, it's not only overfishing, it's logging too. Mm -hmm. That's what I had written down in terms of logging. And D, its impact is minor compared to problems such as logging. Well, it's either C or D. What do you like? Mm -hmm. That's hard. That's a, To be honest with you, this is a hard one. Why is logging? Logging is cutting down trees. If they cut down the trees, no leaves to provide shade for the streams. Streams turn into being too hot. So, those were the impressions. No. D? Okay, here we go. C, I knew it. <laughs> it was between C or D. So, we're getting that 50 50. At least we're getting that 50 50, right? Mm -hmm. But remember, I told you with C, it cannot be the sole focus. Why? Logging. It was hard. That was a hard one. Don't worry, Joanna. You're like, oh, my God, what? What? I know. I know. I know. So, so what the thing means, um, you can know that solely focus, focus in for those. Sole, for, sole focus, meaning the only focus. For mm -hmm. those working to prevent salmon depletion, you probably don't know what depletion is, but it's okay. We just got to look and say, okay, it cannot be only this. Overfishing is one problem, but I remember writing down logging too. So mm -hmm. hopefully at the time when you're actually doing your notes, at some point you're going to say, but I understand that overfishing is a problem, but isn't logging a bigger problem? Boom. So hopefully at that point you could say, oh, it cannot be the only focus because logging is a big problem too. So that's why C was a better answer. Mm -hmm. Now you can see this was difficult because you actually see logging and answer D, but just because it's mentioned in answer D doesn't mean it's automatically correct. Because yeah, because used. I, I find up in the listening part, like some answers are correct by logic, but not by the lecture. Exactly right, mm -hmm. right. So this is how, this is the tricky part. Yep, because although it has the word, it doesn't necessarily automatically say, "Oh, yep, that's correct." Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Okay, last one before I get you out of here. Oh, this is one of those questions. Now remember, it's not about the content of the lecture; it's more about why he's saying this in general. Now I wrote down "student" a few times over here too. And I'm going to hurry up and highlight it for you. I wrote down some of the questions right over here. These are the students' questions. I'm going to put it in blue. And there is another one I have to put in blue. Bam. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Why does the student say this? If it wants to work. Why does one of the students say this? Okay, here we go. I mean, if I were a bear preparing to hibernate, I'd probably eat everything I could catch. Remember, the student is the third one here. It says, why does he only eat half? He mm -hmm. should eat all of it. Why? Because why does the bear leave half of the food there? 